Hi, and welcome to the Start Here podcast for Ruby on Rails. My name is Dane Miller, and I'm here to teach you how to become a Ruby on Rails developer. You can find us online at starthere.fm. Why should you learn Ruby on Rails? Why learn Rails? Why learn Django? Why learn Python? Why learn a framework instead of a language? Why is Ruby so beloved? Why do people, some people hate it? Why is Rails so beloved yet some people hate it? These are all questions that we are going to get to and welcome to start here, Ruby on Rails. This is exciting and this is a new podcast from Start Here FM. This is a network that I created with a buddy of mine, Keith Monahan, and we focus on mostly web development education and Likewise, we've noticed that in Ruby on Rails with Railscasts and other educational resources, some of it has started to dip a little bit in the recent years, and a lot of community members have started to create video series and such, and we just wanted to step forward and be another source for that education. So here we are, a new podcast, Start Here Ruby on Rails, where we're going to talk about educational content for Ruby uh, how to begin with Rails, how to begin your career with Rails, how to grow a career with Ruby on Rails, but not just that. We'll focus on a lot of the te technical aspects as well. So what is Ruby? What are the core components of Ruby? What are the core components of Rails? What are the core components of any framework? And how do those frameworks match up? And what is so interesting about Rails specifically? I'm not going to be agnostic in a sense. I'm going to allow you know the conversation to touch on other frameworks Whereas some Ruby podcasts and Rails podcasts are very religious on what they talk about. Um, this is more of going to be something where I will use Ruby on Rails as a springboard to discuss other topics like a Django or a Laravel. And, and those are really interesting things to note because if you're a Ruby on Rails developer, you should be aware of the community that you're in. And if you don't have a great understanding of the context that you're sitting in, then you can't really be a great developer. So for instance, if a client comes to you and he wants a website and you pitch him on a Ruby on Rails version of that website, how is he, or sorry, Ruby on Rails is the technology, I should say, not a, not a version. And you know, he might have questions like why Rails? If you're new, you should at least be able to answer clearly why rails for you specifically and for everybody it might be different right like so if somebody that's a php guy he might choose laravel and that's totally cool and this isn't a podcast where we're going to be bashing other languages or frameworks i i work in other languages and frameworks and i, I like them all um you know django is very comparable to rails in some ways in some ways it's not right laravel is the same way in fact Laravel being the most recent incumbent, I think, in this space has really picked up a lot of education from the Ruby on Rails community, especially around things to not do and things to do. So that is some context that I really think is valuable. And anyway, just that all to say, this is going to be something that we are super stoked to do. And I hope you guys are super stoked to listen. And I know there is a quite a few Rails podcasts, but here's the thing. In the world of Ruby on Rails, in the world of Django and Python, in the world of PHP and Laravel, and every framework, P, you know, dot, .NET and C Sharp, like whatever it is, I don't think there can be too much educational content. The caveat to that is that I do think if you are a beginner, you can be overwhelmed by too much content. I totally believe that. And that does not negate the fact that there needs to be more content, right? All that means is that you guys need a better roadmap on how to navigate all that content. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. That's, that's sort of one of the goals of Start Here as a network. If you listen to our podcast, Start Here Web Development, you'll know that we talk about a roadmap quite a lot. So the roadmap is this fictitious thing that we've been sort of behind the scenes cr crafting in these like Google documents and trying to map out the best terrain of podcast uh, content based on what we think a new developer should learn from start to finish, literally from nothing to getting a job or a freelance client. And the same is true with Rails. We want to have that same purpose and that same mission here. So what can you learn at the beginning when you know nothing? And then what do you move on to next? What do you move on to after that? How do you get from, say, understanding of device and authentication to moving into authorization and can-can and -can perhaps? Like, how do you cross that chasm? And how do you move on from device to launching a website for real? Like, how do you move on from a project to a, to a client site 
how do you uh, sell your projects to a potential client as experience? All of this is some is sort of encompasses this roadmap, right? And this is a huge problem in web development is this idea that there is too much content. And I really just want to emphasize that I don't think there can be too much educational resources. I think a, a gluttony of educational resources is only beneficial to us as a society and as an industry, especially. And we have so many new developers people that are dropping out of college, people that can't afford college, people that don't want the student debt. And what they're doing is they're looking online for educational resources. And that is a great way to go about it. And I think that is a great way to segue into our first topic. Our first topic is, do you need to go to a boot camp or can you learn Rails on your own? So you may have seen online these boot camps. These are usually four to $12,000, uh, three month boot camps. I'll have a list of them in the show notes. Again, you can find the show notes at starthere.fm slash Ruby on rails slash one. And these boot camps again, they're some of the names just to call out. Uh, you could call perhaps the ThoughtBot apprenticeship, a boot camp, the hacker school boot camp, Da Vinci coders boot camp, the startup Institute boot camp. The dev boot camp, these are all boot camps that you've probably heard of. And you and if you're learning web development nowadays, sort of the trend is how can I get enough money to get into this boot camp? The problem that I have with boot camps is mainly a financial one. So what that means is you can learn everything that the boot camp will teach you on your own. Don't get that twisted, right? That's that's actually a really important fact. You can learn on your own everything that you would spend eight to 14 to 15 to $25,000 for. You can. And also, likewise, in a lot of college courses, you can learn a lot of that material on your own as well. Why go to a boot camp? Well, go to a boot camp for the same reason that you go to college, right? You go to college because you can have the experiences. You can have the actual experiences and get things ingrained in you in a different way. A lot of the times, that's not education. That's instead drinking and partying and stuff. And that's, you know, one of the problems with colleges that the boot camps don't have. The boot camps are hyper compacted. So it's a very extreme amount of programming in a very short amount of time. And educational material. So you won't have time to really associate that much with, with outside parties doing, doing events other than just focus on education and learning. And that can be a huge benefit for you as a developer, right? You want to learn, you can go to this place and they will teach you and they'll be happy to. And sometimes you'll even get some of the best people in the industry that come in to guest lecture or teach a guest class on you know, perhaps something, you know, menial, like how to do threads in Ruby or, you know, just little trivial type things. But it's those trivial things that are really interesting to learn in a group format because it, it can be difficult. You know, it can be challenging to learn on your own. So what I'm getting at, I recommend going to a boot camp if you are completely flush with cash and you don't have any debt. Being very honest, if you have debt, or you are struggling, do not go to a boot camp. Do not try to put your life on hold to go to a boot camp. It does not make sense. Do not quit your job to go to a boot camp. You don't need to, okay? So here, here's the thing. You don't have to quit your job to go to a boot camp to maybe learn something and then at the end of the boot camp not quite get it and then go back to your job or fail to go back to your job because it wasn't cool with them that you quit, right? I've seen this scenario before. Let this be a warning. Somebody quits their job, not a, you know, not a, a come back later type quit, literally quits, goes to a boot camp, ready to go, super stoked, pumped. They learn for three months, four months, five months, whatever it is. They leave the boot camp. They have some skills. They're pretty dangerous with programming. They can get some stuff done, but they can't find a job. Maybe the boot camp guarantees jobs at the end of it. That's not true for every person. In every boot camp, there's going to be one or two or three or a hundred individuals that are not going to get a job because they are at the bottom of the class. That means they don't know how to sell themselves. They aren't go-getters. They didn't learn the material correctly. They might not be fully comprehending everything and they didn't take the time to ask the question. So it's not ingrained in their DNA. They aren't, they just didn't do it correctly. And it's not to say that that's bad for them. I mean, everybody's got their own challenges, right? No big deal. I'm not judging. But 
the, the point is there is going to be the significant chance that you don't get a job, even if they guarantee jobs, even if they're internships, right? So here's the problem. If you do what this guy does and you quit your job, go to this boot camp, and then you try to find the, the placement, the job placement, and you can't get it, you're going to have to go back to your job and say with your hat in your hand, or you're just going to have to figure out something else to do. And you're basically in a situation that you wish you wouldn't have put yourself in, right? Regardless of whether or not you can go back to your job, it's a, it's a tough situation. You spent a bunch of cash and you don't have anything to show for it in the sense of a job. You can program, but everybody that can program can't get a job. It's, that's not how it works. What I would say is if you're considering trying to get a job and you're wondering what the easiest way to get into Ruby on Rails, web development, how to get into startups, maybe you're looking at tech and you're trying to understand it. One thing that you can do is just start learning on your own. You don't need a boot camp to do that. You can start two hours every single day, one hour every single day, 30 minutes a day, whatever it is, and put it put aside the time when you get home from work, before you leave for work, wake up an hour early, go to bed an hour late, get seven hours instead of eight, whatever you need to do, you can do, and you can learn it on your own. Well, good buddy of mine, Keith Monahan, who I do the web development podcast with, he's a great example of this. He spent, he has a family, and he wanted to learn web development. He was working in another industry. And he really wanted to learn, but he struggled to figure out how. So he, what he did was every day for two years, spent a couple of hours working and learning and typing, literally doing the typing every day. And that, that is another key thing that these boot camps do is they force you to do the typing. And it, you know, there's a lot of this uh, talk about writing, how writing is so difficult. And then a lot of people that give advice to writers, they say, just start writing, right? So it's, it's a lot of that sort of motor mechanics and that, that muscle memory that you build in these boot camps. You can do all that just like Keith did on your own, just at home, two hours a night, two hours in the morning, whatever. You can do it on your own. So my point is, you don't need a boot camp, but if you really want to and you have the expendable cash and you're not in debt, then I think it's a great social. I think you'll get a ton of connections if you're that type of person. Um, it will push you. It'll push you past your comfort zone, and that's always a good thing as well. So so here's another problem with boot camps. If you're the type of person that's sitting at home listening to this right now and you're struggling to understand what to do to get to the next level, you know, perhaps you're a beginner de developer and you want to get a job. Maybe you're, you don't even know about Ruby on Rails and you want to learn what it is. Maybe you're an intermediary Ruby on Rails developer and you're trying to level up to be a senior and get a higher paying job. Whatever it is that you're trying to do, if you're not actively, proactively going out and doing it already, going to a boot camp is the worst idea ever. You are not going to change the type of person that you are in a boot camp. Th that being said, maybe you're the 1%. Maybe you're the 1% that needed to break out of their comfort zone and then you change who you are. But it's the patterns and rituals that you do every day that make you who you are. So if you're somebody that's actually proactively learning and educating yourself, then I think you don't need that boot camp. But if you do go there, wow, is it going to be a nice boost because you're going to get a lot of connections. You're going to have paid a lot of money, but if you can afford it, then I think it's going to make you feel more fulfilled. One thing you have to consider in this decision is the concept of socialization in education, right? So when you're around other people that are learning the same things that you're learning and you're learning it as well, it can help build the mental reservoir of questions to ask. So let's say you hear somebody next to you ask a question or you're sitting and you hear the person to your left complaining about the compiler in this one. You're basically building context. Your, your mind is constantly absorbing and building context. That's kind of challenging when you're at home every night doing this on your own. And that is why if you do choose to do this on your own, I have a very specific set of recommendations and we'll get to those next. But if you do decide to go to the boot camp, you have that part to consider as well. So this socialization actually can help build context and build your understanding of different types of developers. You see them work, you see different types of people in, in the way that they interact with their code, the questions that they ask, you see multiple people doing code reviews. 
Some people are complaining about your syntax. Some people are complaining about your class structure. Some people want you to encapsulate objects differently. Some people are complaining about your object-oriented paradigms. Maybe you don't even, maybe the last lecture was about object orientation and you don't quite get it and somebody complains about that or, or points it out. I shouldn't say complains, points it out in a code review. Whereas another person might have just skipped that and gone right to something else. All of this is context. And as a developer, as an edu as a self-educator in any industry, what you're doing is you have to sort of absorb as much context as you possibly can. And that's sort of the hack number one that I would give if there was a hack. What that hack is to literally try to absorb as much context as you can about the community. Okay, what does that mean? What that means is you want to jump into the community head first. You want to go to the forums. You want to go to the, so let's, let's use a real world example. Let's say you want to be a Ruby on Rails developer. Hey, that's what this podcast is. So a Ruby on Rails developer, you're going to get IRC. You're going to go to the Ruby channel, the Ruby on Rails channel, the Rails channel, whatever. All those channels, you're going to go there and you're going to sit in them and you're going to observe why do this? You're observing a number of things, right? You're observing how the leaders in the community communicate with the beginners, which is critical. You're observing the beginners asking questions. What kind of questions are they asking? What kind of responses are they getting? Are they getting sent to a wiki? Are they, you know, maybe getting specific answers? Maybe some of those questions you had as well. Those are answers that you can utilize for your own education. You store those answers off in like Evernote or something. Always be retaining and gathering these notes, right? So that's another trick. So get some place that you can take notes, be it notes, what, you know, Evernote, whatever. Evernote's free. Use that. Make a new note. Call it Rails Notes or something like that. Rails development. And then every time that you're in IRC and somebody asks a really good question and gets a good answer, it can just be a chat log. Copy and paste the chat log. Go through it later and clean it up. But you need to be gathering things. You're basically in a mode of gathering, but you're also in a mode of absorbing. So this is the context, right? So you want to be always absorbing context. So what are you going to do more than just the IRC? You're going to go to forums. You're going to go to as many forums as you can. You're going to go to job boards. You're going to scout job boards. What you're looking for there is language. What is it that recruiters are looking for? You know, maybe a recruiter is looking for a senior Rails developer that's got experience setting up Memcache and Redis, a lot of NoSQL work. Maybe another recruiter is looking for somebody who has experience with geospatial databases using Rails as like the interaction layer, whatever, right? So you're basically going to use uh, job boards as a way to gather context. Again, just the point is to gather context. Then, you're going to go to websites where people are giving education just like this, right? That is a huge way to gather context. So you're going to go to Railscasts. You're going to go to Rails, just Google Rails video, a bunch of great community resources to watch videos. You can go to Reddit, reddit.com slash r slash Ruby. And I think Ruby on Rails or Rails. I, I mostly stay on the Ruby one though. And you're going to use all of these community resources to gather context about this place that you want to play in. If you want to play in an industry, you've got to gather context on that industry. You got to go all in on that industry. So that's your job. As the person that wants to learn, your job is to jump in head first, swim to the bottom, and then slowly navigate your surroundings. Slowly start to open your eyes and see where you are, see, what, see what's going on around you, right? And then when you start to understand the lay of the land, then you can start executing. You can start executing uh, your own education. You can start utilizing little hacks and tricks to, to push yourself further to the next and next level because once you understand all of the stepping stones, you understand how to hack your way from the first to the third, from the third to the fifth, from the fifth to the seventh, right? That's a huge problem that beginners have in every self-education I've ever seen, web development, Ruby on Rails, anything, right? Investing, it doesn't matter what it is. And that is a huge problem. Ruby on Rails developers enter the industry, they say, oh, I wanna learn Rails, I wanna learn Ruby on Rails, but they don't know the context or the landscape. So the landscape could be the landscape could be very simple, right? The landscape could look something like this. When you're learning Ruby on Rails, maybe you start with a blog. You build a blog. Next step, you build a library website. 
Next step, using only Rails generators. Obviously, if you've learned this context and you've done the landscape education that I just told you about, you would know what a Rails generator is. See, this is this is part of it. Understanding Rails generators would be part of that context. Then maybe you decide to make another personal project using maybe Redis in a very trivial type way. So going from stepping stone to stepping stone is easier when those stepping stones are clearly defined. Most of the questions I get on the web development podcast are all centered around not understanding the landscape. So a lot of people don't understand how to get to the next step or the next level or to even understand sort of like what the roadmap is or how they would approach it. And I, I think you can understand and evaluate that yourself. What, what you can do that is a trick on learning context is to not immediately enter an educational industry or an industry that you want to educate yourself on with the idea that you need to go deep on any one item at first. So enter with a sponge-like mentality. Start sponging 5% of everything that you see and read up. Don't get overwhelmed. That's not allowed in this beginning phase because you want to attract more. You're just like a siphon. You siphon it all into your brain. So you're going to this IRC, you're going to the forums, you're going to the sites, you're going to the videos, you're watching, you're listening. You're you're not really taking notes yet because you don't know what notes to take. That's the critical part. You don't know what notes to take. So you're just listening, absorbing. It's all coming to you. And that is the best way to start. After you hear a certain amount of stuff, then you'll kind of start to associate. We are sort of um, pattern matchers by default, in a sense, because of the way our brain works. So you'll start to recognize these patterns. And as these patterns start to emerge, you can slowly start to see these stones on the ground. Like, okay, well, it seems as though everybody's learning devise. I've got to learn that. And you, you write that down in a mind map. Then you see everybody's learning Redis. Well, at some point I got to learn that. It's not directly related to Rails, but I've got to learn that. Um, you see everybody's learning this or this or that or this, blah, blah, blah. And then you're seeing every new person is asking this question. I see, I keep seeing this come up. You know, I keep seeing it come up. Maybe you don't even write that down because you don't know it's important, but your brain will start automatically pattern matching. After about a week or two or three weeks of doing this, you're, you will start to fully understand the landscape that you're in and the communities that you're in. It doesn't usually take three weeks, but if you're if you're a little bit harder to understand things, then it can take that long, especially if you're not as socially intelligent. We have a lot of different types of intelligences, so that's one thing you need to, to need to know. We have emotional intelligence, physical intelligence, social intelligence. You know, NBA players and NFL players, they're highly more, you know, probably they're more physically intelligent than you are. They're certainly more physically intelligent than me. They've got physical skills beyond the even intelligence of physical skills that I even have the capability of, right? And that's totally cool. Now, you might not have the social intelligence to be able to gather all these contexts, but you are a pattern matcher by default as a human, so you can't let that distract you. You have to get into the right mind state. And when you get into the right mind state and you go in and you start learning these things, you will start absorbing them. And when you're not focused on the details, on the bullshit, when you're not focused on the bullshit, you will be able to recognize these patterns. I keep emphasizing the word bullshit. It's really important here. You cannot enter an industry and start learning something that you don't understand, especially when you don't understand what you should be learning. This is the by far the most important part of this podcast. If it's the introductory podcast, that is what I want to tell you. So I'm going to get into the exact steps in the action plan for learning this context that I keep describing, but I just wanted to mention, I know that was a very topic and we jumped around from from item to item and it was sort of whimsical but that is the point of the first episode I think to me it's just to to sort of introduce myself and and get you guys familiar with the way that I communicate and the way that I deliver communication to you guys especially so that you can better absorb what I have to say going forward and that is a, all a part of the social awareness that you have to do as the listener now one more add on I'll get to before the action items and the thing that I didn't mention is context and understanding this landscape and understanding those stepping stones. I really like the analogy of the stepping stones. Understanding the stepping stones gives you the visuality to see where you're going, right? So 
the stepping stones when you when you can see them when you can see devise is something in the future because you don't understand it when you see that can can is in the future because you don't understand it when you see that active job and active record are things that you need to learn more deeply because you don't understand them and you're not overwhelmed yet you have them written down stuffed away you're you're focused on something else maybe more beginner and then you know that you'll get to them eventually those are stepping stones and you can see you can visualize you visualize the future and you visualize your path if you can't visualize where you're going any any path will get you there right that that's a very common phrase and I, I i believe it's true in development i believe it's true in every aspect of life but especially development if you're entering something new and you're learning it you have to understand where you're going and this is a key reason why every senior developer can pick up a new language in under three weeks at least enough to be dangerous why is that you ask like why does it take me uh, a year to learn something trivial because I'm a beginner, but it takes a senior Ruby on Rails developer only three weeks to learn another completely different language. How can that be fair? The thing is, it's not about fair. What it is about is he has the context and he understands the stepping stones inherently. He understands exactly what to do in a new language because he did it for Rails. That's what you will understand after you go through this because he did it for Ruby. You will do it for Ruby. You'll do it for Rails. He did it for Rails. When that senior developer moves on to the next thing, go... PHP and Laravel, whatever it is, he immediately knows where to start and he sees the future. He sees, he knows what the ORM connection is. It might be a different language. It might be a different ORM and a different DSL, but he can basically grasp it mentally, right? There's probably nothing that he can't mentally grasp. And that's what you want to be able to do. You want to be able to mentally grasp these things. So what are the exact steps that I would do if I was starting today with Ruby on Rails? The first thing I would do is just like I said, first thing is to get IRC, go to all the relevant IRC channels, Google, Ruby on Rails, IRC, just start sitting in them and start observing. This is your new home. This is the community that you wanna be a part of. So this is where you gotta go. Step two, I would then go to railscast.com, even though it's a little bit of an older resource, I would go there and then I would Google Ruby on Rails videos and I would watch a number of those videos. You can you can jump around, nothing really in any order. Again, you're you're absorbing, you're in this first three week phase, you're absorbing. Jump around to all different videos on Railscast. Go, uh, then when you're done, maybe you've watched five videos, different ones, right? 100, number one, number three, 98, right? It doesn't matter. Then Google Ruby on Rails videos, then click around and, and go view and listen to five or so other community videos, maybe 10, 15, whatever you prefer. Nothing less than five though. Step three, now you're going to actually view a tutorial, a, a couple tutorials, text-based tutorials, how to build a blog in Ruby on Rails, the Ruby on Rails book.org go to all these google the ruby on rails book and you'll get to it view these different text-based tutorials and read through them don't follow them yet you don't need to rush into it no big deal just read them browse through them see what the basic steps are so another thing that happens when you start to read these tutorials is you start to see things come up over and over again okay create a controller create a model create a resource create a route create a new table all of these things start to become ingrained in you. Read literally 10 of these tutorials. Just read them. This is a huge trick. I, I'm being very serious. It, it seems like it would be counterintuitive to do this, but definitely read them. What you're going to do is when you're done reading them on, on number 9, 10 or so, start taking notes. Like, oh, every time that somebody goes to create a new thing, be it a new person in the database, a new entity what they do is they create a new route a new controller a new table a new model right write that down put a little note that says creating a ruby on rails app and then put a, a, a shout out in there that's like uh, when creating a new resource they do this this and this route controller model these are really good things to understand again you're probably not going to need to know these right away because you're going to follow a tutorial that'll be my next advice but the point is that you've written it down and the concept of understanding what to write down that's the most important part that's why you've been reading these tutorials for the past few days i would expect you to spend many days just reading and this is the same advice that more advanced developers give people that are junior or mid-level they'll tell them to just read source code 
And that's a problem that a lot of people have. They don't ever take the time and read source code. But because you don't understand source code yet in Ruby, we're just going to get you reading tutorials. Now, after you've read the first couple tutorials, you might, well, first of all, you might ask, which tutorial should I read? Part of this step is to Google Ruby on Rails tutorials. And I mean, I, I can't be certain, but all of the ones on the first and second page are probably gonna be of some high quality. The community is pretty incredible in Ruby on Rails, to be honest. And it's some of the best material out of any community I've ever been in. So I can pretty much guarantee that any Ruby on Rails tutorial you happen to land on, there's gonna be somebody that really cares about what that tutorial contains. And they did a really, they tried to do a really good job of learning it. Now, a caveat to this is if you tell somebody that you're doing this, one of the things that they might say to you is they might say, well, hey, you're reading things that are out of date. Do not watch. They'll tell you, don't watch the first Railscast video. You're learning out of date material. That doesn't matter. That's something that people say that's very common. You don't really care about that. That shouldn't be something that you care about. Why should you not care about that? Well, for one, it doesn't benefit you to care at this point. You don't know what the best and the worst is. It's better to know the worst and the best. I mean, you need the context. If you if you just learn the right solution every time, how can you face a problem where you have a potential wrong solution and know that it's wrong, right? You don't even know what the outdated technologies are in Rails. You don't know what Rails 3 looked like versus Rails 4. So this is really important. Do not listen to anybody that says this because it's all part of this context. He would be correct if I told you to follow that tutorial as if it was a personal project. I would never tell you to go to the first Railscast video from 2008 and follow it. I wouldn't tell you to do that. I would tell you to watch it for context like I just did, but don't follow it, right? Okay, so that being said, moving on to the final step in gathering context, and that is to actually start following tutorials yourself. So you've read a bunch of them, you've got some notes, you've watched a bunch of videos, you've done all the previous steps, you're in IRC, you're communicating, you're engaged, you're starting to playful out. And now what you're gonna do is you're going to follow your first tutorial. So you're going to go to, I would recommend, the Ruby on Rails book. It's a really good book. He updates it religiously every time Rails comes out. He actually is probably one of the most active book updaters and version updaters on books I've ever seen. It's it's fantastic. Mike, I think Michael Hartle is his name. If, I hope I'm getting that right. He's a great guy. So go there, follow that tutorial. This is the first time you're going to actually do programming, theoretically, if you're starting from zero and you've been following this. So this would be the first time that you actually do code. And he'll teach you how to get set up on Windows and on Mac so that your development environment can run. But the cool thing is at this point, after you've, set, after you've seen all these tutorials and everything, you've got an understanding. When he tells you to go to the command line and enter this Rails new a uh, test project, you'll be like, oh, I know what that is. That's the command to start Rails because I just read it in like 10 tutorials and they all did it when they start like, oh, I know that. I saw Mike, uh, I saw the Railscast guy do it on a Rails video. See, so, so that's all part of this. The point of gathering context is to then benefit you when you're building this first tutorial. The amount of education that you'll get from having done that context gathering is very, very large. If you jumped right into learning this tutorial without knowing anything, without even understanding what Rails was, what the history was, etc., you're going to have a tough time. Another thing that I would do is I would double back. I'm, I'm going to double back here to the video section. And at the end of the video tutorials, I would add in a couple of Rails cast or Rails Conf videos. So go to YouTube and search for Rails Conf, search David Heinemeyer Hansen, search uh, Ruby or uh, Aaron Patterson and view one or two or three of those videos from each of those individuals. DHH is the creator and founder of Ruby on Rails and Aaron Patterson is a core committer to Ruby and a core committer to Rails and an all around brilliant person. And those two people often have differing viewpoints. So I don't want you to view one or the other. I would prefer that you view both. Um, David will say certain things that makes Aaron uh, sort of upset. It's, it's just sort of the dynamic that they have based on what they hold dear in the Ruby and Rails community. And there, um, anyway, the point is that that's more context, right? Those differing opinions, that's even more context. It's kind of like a presidential debate. You have the context of Democrat and Republican. And without one, 
um, you wouldn't really know so much of how the Democrat stands without what the Republican also says, right? So you wouldn't know the balance or what the where he was standing in the in the area. Anyway, so now going back, what you're going to do is you're going to focus on this first tutorial. After all the other stuff, you're going to focus on the first tutorial of rubyonrailsbook.org. You're going to follow it step by step. Now, you're probably going to get to a number of spots where you're running into issues that you didn't learn about yet, that you haven't read about right? Maybe he tells you to start up device and jump into user authentication. And yeah, he kind of like walks you through it and you get it working, but you're like, wait a minute, I don't quite understand it yet. I didn't comprehend what he says. So you have it working because he, he will literally tell you step by step by step what to do, but, but perhaps you don't have it working yet, or, or perhaps you don't understand it rather, so you don't comprehend it fully. This is the point that you go back, you jump back into the videos, you go back online, and you supplement your education. So you've implemented it, you've done the commands with your fingers, typed device, new, you know, device generate, you've created your user routes, your, your, you've set up user login and registration. Now go to the device GitHub, read the getting started guide. Now go to the Railscast, type in device, watch that video. All of these things are ways to supplement your education once you understand where to supplement, what to supplement, and what you don't understand enough to supplement, right? Now, now that you've done that, what is the next step? Well, at this point, I would say stay tuned for the next episode for the next step, but to give you a little bit of a spoiler, the next episode we're going to be focusing on what is the best way to get to an advanced beginner level and what is the quickest way to get to an advanced beginner level in Ruby on Rails. This is a dangerous place to be in, an advanced beginner. You'll hear about this often, especially in writing and, and other knowledge work type areas. The concept of the advanced beginner is tough because you can get stuck there. You can get stuck in this area where you are such a beginner, but you're very advanced and you and there's a lot of nuance there, right? Like people get trapped in this valley of advanced beginner because getting over that hump to an actual really solid mid-level requires you to understand a whole heap of things, right? So anyway, what we'll talk about next is the best way to get from knowing that first tutorial, doing that first tutorial and understanding it, all the way up to an advanced beginner. Advanced beginner is able to get a job. An advanced beginner should have clients, you know, given the size of the clients and the relative complexity, all of that is taken into account. We wouldn't want an advanced beginner to do anything too crazy, right? Like nothing, uh, we, we don't want you to sell yourself uh, greater than you are, but an advanced beginner can certainly build a website an advanced beginner can certainly build a somewhat trivial web application for sure. And there are people that are willing to pay for that. So anyway, on the next episode and the next couple, we'll talk about all of the best strategies to get from where you are now, which I hope is following the tutorials, gathering the context, etc., to becoming an advanced beginner. And then from there, once we're at the end of that section, which will probably cover multiple, multiple episodes, we'll cover how to get out of that and how to move on to a more intermediary level of understanding. And with that, I wanna thank you for joining us on the first ever episode of Start Here, Ruby on Rails. And I am really excited to be able to do this with you guys. And I want to do this every week. So every week you can tune back in. And I'm not sure of the exact date every week yet, but it will be weekly. And you can tune back in and you will get your next dose of education, your next dose of Rails motivation. And that's one thing that I hope to provide each week is a little bit of motivation for learning Rails and, and self-education because it can be tough. And hopefully when you tune back in every week, you get that little juice that you need to go to the next level to learn the next thing, to move on to the next item. On your list and if you don't know the list i'll provide it for you so go to the website starthere.fm slash ruby on rails write to me if you have any questions dane at start here fm uh this is a new show so if you really like it please leave an itunes review if you're listening to it there if you're on your favorite podcast uh player just go to the itunes store and search start here ruby on rails it'll be there and look for the red cover art and please give it a review we would really appreciate it and thank you so much for listening we'll see you next time